It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, Heidel, taxi uh, mikit. It's the extent of my Swedish, unfortunately. But uh, it's like I said, it's a pleasure to be here. I lived in Stockholm briefly a few years ago, and it was, it was a truly uh, kind of beautiful moment when I was invited to come back and present uh, my, new, my new talk, Century of the Selfie, Your Mediated Experience. Uh, like I said, I lived in Stockholm a few years ago, uh, and it was really, uh, it's an honor to be back and be on the same roster as the lineup here. It's, it's such an incredible honor. Uh, I went to Hyper Island briefly and studied and learned a little bit about the Swedish way of doing things, which was uh, really in contrast to my time in New York, but incredibly illuminating. One of my uh, favorite things that I learned from the experience of being in Stockholm was that I never realized winter could be quite so dark. <laughs> but also, uh, I, I had heard that the city becomes very illuminated um, because it, it's so white and so cold. And I never really could get that kind of light out of my mind. So I'll, that'll I'll take with me forever. Um, when I was invited here, um, I thought it's a little bit of an unusual forum for the talk that I give. Uh, I typically uh, speak internationally to um, a very niche kind of market, uh, which is like designers, programmers, people working within um, a very specific creative space. Uh, but I think there's something when I when I consider how we how we conceptualize our work now. Uh, there's something about how we translate that into digital culture that's become part of every practice. I work in installation, film, sculpture, uh, to create immersive environments that um, really stimulate the sentence, uh, senses and create a meditative space. I work in process. The mediated moment between the hand and the eye and the hand and the software, the hand and the code, is really an a intersection and a trans transitionary space that I'm exploring, uh, which I document at length. I think the, as we sort of re-examine how we communicate ourselves in this digital age, we create these mediated moments that acts as a feed or a memory archive. We all live in public in some way. And I do, in, in a sense, through these digital impressions. Uh, but today, I had a great idea that I wanted to talk not so much about my art practice, but about the selfie phenomenon. I promise I'm not going to show a lot of duck faces or pictures of my hairstyle. If I do, you could leave the room, but I, I really hope you don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious about the ubiquity of the selfie. We're used to seeing selfies everywhere. They pop up on our feeds, in our phones, and they kind of infect our friends, I think. Uh, I think everyone has at least one or two people who just, they can't get enough of themselves at that one particular angle. Uh, it, I think it's the MySpace angle. These are, this is the lexicon now, I think. Um, in some ways, we're all complicit in the new culture of the selfie. Sometimes I'm guilty, or hell, maybe we're all a little bit guilty. Uh, in the age of Instagram, not one of us is spared. Uh, but so perhaps it's time for some trivia. Uh, the first selfie was uh, made by Robert Cornelius, a pioneer in photography in 1839. Selfies are not new. The first selfie in space was taken in 1966 by Buzz Aldrin. Uh, and and uh, according to Time Magazine, Makati City in the Philippines is the selfie capital of the world. With my hometown of New York coming in as a close second, having lived in Williamsburg and having been out on a Friday night, I can tell you I'm wholly unsurprised. Uh, Miami ranks number three in the selfiest cities in the world. No surprises there. Following Anaheim, Petaline, Yaya, uh, Tel Aviv, Manchester, Milan, and Cebu City. And like it or not, it's a worldwide phenomenon. And it's not going anywhere for the foreseeable future. We have our selfie sticks. We have our selfie scandals. We have our selfie apps. And we are growing our selfie cities. And though it might be slightly more than it appears, 
artists have been playing with their own selfies and their notions of celebrity and privacy and identity for decades and centuries. But what happens when these projects encounter the mass spectacle of the digital network? Maybe, just maybe, your 15 minutes just became eternity. Uh, when I think about the internet that I grew up with, I think about the internet before the selfie uh, and art projects exploring sort of networked individuality. Uh, this was a seminal piece uh, called We Feel Find by Sepp Kamvar and Jonathan Harris. At the time, it was a powerful way to visualize narrative. It was about our stories, our revelations, our confessions, our joys, our anxieties, and our fears. I made my first website in the 90s. We all had online alter egos back then, like superheroes. It was a uniquely fragmented narrative internet. In her piece, Surfing, Drowning, Swimming, internet scholar Joanne McNeil writes about the evolution of how the digital landscape fundamentally changed the way we experience media. In the 90s, we were surfing with the advent of the entertainment media. In the 2000s, we were drowning from a deluge of networked content, an initiative to digitize everything. And for the past few years, we've been diving, diving into curation, curating and recapping with listicles and stacks, trying to make sense of it all. But what does the prevalence of the selfie mean for our own internet narratives? What does it mean to mediate oneself in that way? And what is it doing to our self-conceptions? When I think about the internet that I grew up with, I think about bulletin board systems and GeoCities neighborhoods and CAM communities, and I look very fondly upon that time. That era is extinct. Uh, that era became our feeds and then our networks and now our mediated reality. At some point between the bulletin board systems of old and Facebook, we became our own alter egos. This is our century of the selfie. I find the ubiquitous presence of the selfie really powerful in our, in our culture. We mediate our identities. We mediate our experiences. There's something very unabashedly raw in how we do that, I think, and something really temporal about it as well. Just by staring into a tiny lens on the corner of our phones. It's a way of saying, this is what I care about. It's a way of saying, this is me. And moreover, it's a way of saying, this is what I want to be. It's the hello world of photography. The Selfie City Project is a project by internet writer Lev Manovic in collaboration with Mort Steffener that documents this growing movement and investigates the style of self-portraiture in five cities across the world. It parses through selfies in Bangkok, Berlin, Moscow, New York, and Sao Paulo and captures and reveals patterns in the way we express our moods and the angles by which we do so based on a set of algorithms. The portraits can be aligned, cropped, and desaturated to form one gray mass of uniform smiling faces. I wonder what are the implications of the algorithmic quantification of the selfie? What happens when we use algorithms to measure our identities in that way? Selfie City visually displays the similarities and patterns and how we capture ourselves and they feed it back to us. It's a provocative project, but I think there's an irony in how it makes people feel. Even though it ostensibly connects selfies in five different cities across the world, I think when you look at the project, it, it possibly renders us more disconnected. It highlights what is readable by the machine and what is understandable by the algorithm but it ignores what is interesting about us. It can't parse what we are and what we care about. It can't parse what we are and who we want to be. Technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. And I wonder, what is algorithm but ideology in executable form? I'm interested in the notion of remystifying data and unquantifying the self.
My artistic practice is in part driven by that aim. For me, I draw. Drawing is a form of the mediated moment, the mediated self. As it is, I return to what I know. Drawing is not the form, it is the way of seeing the form. I write, I compose, and I craft spaces, exploring the mark made by hand and the mark made by machine to create moving images and immersive experiences that express without quantification. I process. I believe that process is a way of being in the world. And in the discovery of it, one can glean something truer than what's in the pixels and what's in the file format and what is readable by the machine. Quantification is a form of fact. Facts do not convey truth, that's a mistake. Facts create norms, but truth creates illumination. In my practice, I'm exploring the notion the notion that consciousness is embedded in form, and with the creation of form, you can alter your own reality. My friend Florian says reality is negotiable. Or maybe what is seen cannot be unseen. I think about frames of attention and the immediacy of the mediated. So much of the work that I do is incredibly manual, and it's very improvisational, and about the handmade mark, and letting a form of consciousness fill a site-specific space. Unlike many installation artists, I am driven by the desire to create these bespoke spaces, dauntingly intricate, but also uniquely ephemeral. A few years ago, I found myself in Geneva for an installation. Uh, and like so many of us who travel and with gear, uh, I turn to my phone for solace. You know, you're sort of stuck in traffic, you always kind of go there. Um, my phone was not very responsive. Uh, the screen fed my existential crisis back to me. As it is often abroad, these, my connection was down, so these messages kept on popping up. You have no friends nearby. You have no new messages. The screen was an abyss of this melancholy and existential, uh, existential despair. I called it goth screenshots. You'd be surprised how many times you've seen a goth screenshot without even realizing it. Three years later, I have a collection of over 300 images made by myself and a community of followers. I love these. <laughs> goth screenshots became an apparel line and a new outlet for my own creative expression, uh, a new truth within the pixels. Who says our interfaces can't be expressive? Uh, we've been featured in some places, and you know you've made it when the BuzzFeed community doesn't get your project at all. I'm curious about how technology and our use of it can render us empty. Goth Screenshots is in an international collective of people who kind of feel the same way. This is one of my favorites, submitted by uh, tomorrow's speaker, Harper Reed, which I love. Very motivating, I think. Um, Brian Eno does a podcast called The Long Now, which elaborates on, amongst other things, the virtue of the extended attention span, the anti-elevator pitch, the marathon project, extended contemplation. Susan Sontag, one of my favorite writers, writes, all great art contains at its center contemplation, dynamic contemplation. And I'm interested in building projects, and let's build projects that celebrate and facilitate dynamic contemplation, a vast reverie, if you will. For goth screenshots, anyway, I see no end to the dystopian existential layer of technology. I'm interested in the long now, what the long queue might be in long-form projects like improvisational drawing, digital experiments, and what happens when we imbue our, the human element back into our interfaces, our spaces, and our mediated experiences. 
I wonder what it would be like if we demystified data and unquantified the self. In the century of the selfie, how can we create narratives and products that mediate our experiences in dynamic, surprising, and contemplative ways, that celebrate dynamic contemplation, the long queue, and the long now? I've come to believe that the screen is not the medium, we are. Our selfies embody our behaviors, our memories, our mediated experiences. And thank you for listening to mine today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Please stay on stage. Oh, thank you. Uh, I would like to call for my colleague, Rikka Dahlstrand. Sure. He had made a plaque as a member for almost 3 billion people who are online and constantly growing. That is about 40% of the population. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, from one Whoa. artist to another. Th lovely, thank you. wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. It counts all the people who are connected to the internet. Wow. 
I thought there'd be more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, you could say that, but they are. You see, they're yeah. growing. Wow. <laughs> so thank you very much once again. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you.